Israel recently initiated attacks on Iran. How did these attacks affect the Israeli stock market in a causal way? It turns out that data science tools can actually help us estimate these. We're going to use an event study to estimate the impact of this event on the Israeli stock market. And this is a really transferable skill because there are always events that are going on in the tech world, in any other sort of industry. And you may, as a data scientist, want to know the effect of it. So the first thing I do is collect the data. I use the Yahoo Finance API and I get data on EIS. This is a, a ETF that tracks the Israeli stock um, market, as well as Vaxis, which is VXUS, which is an international stock market index, VOO, which is uh, the S&P 500, and XLF, which is a banking index. Now, the reason I considered XLF is because the EIS contains a lot of banking stocks, but it turns out I end up dropping XLF anyway. So Yahoo Finance data comes out in a panel. So there is one row for each ticker and date. So it's run an event study. I actually need to reshape this wide so that there is one row per date and one column for the ticker of interest as well as all the comparisons. And then the event study is just a linear regression of the ticker of interest against the comparisons with a flag for the event. And you can see the results. So when we only look at the single day, the first day of the attacks, uh, this caused a 1.6% drop in the Israeli market relative to what the S&P 500 and the international index did. Now, this is actually a complicated problem because the attacks actually would have affected the U.S. markets as well as the international markets. And so we interpret this as what were the effects on the Israeli market relative to the world market. But one thing that's really interesting is that that effect, that 1.6% decline, is well within a 95% confidence interval of the relative returns that we would see if this index compared to the S&P 500 and the international index in the past. So the result's not statistically significant. Now, one of the things that's uh, useful about the event study is we can see time varying effects. So rather than just having an event and a dummy for the event, we can have indicators for the day before, two days before, three days before, the day of the event, a day after, and two days after, for example. But we can set this up however we want. And in this case, again, we see that the day of the event, it was a 1.6% relative decline. But the day after the event, it actually had a huge jump of 5%. Again, this is not a nominal increase. It's relative to how it had been doing against these two indexes in the past. And so if we track the coefficients, uh, again, of the EIS relative netting out the effects of the U.S. and international markets, we can see that it had been below zero, slightly below during the first day of the event, and then it shot up, and the next two days were actually positive. And sure enough, if we aggregate that Friday and Monday into a single event date, and we look at the effect of those first two trading days, we actually get a statistically significant positive effect, which is pretty crazy. So these event studies are really interesting because you can use them to evaluate public policy. And this is a great way of training yourself to get used to these techniques. But in the real world, you'd probably be looking at something like what is the effect of an outage or what is the effect of rolling out a feature into new markets?